Hi, I'm Nick Kramer of Global Fixed Income Research at Standard & Poor's. After posting positive returns for 10 months straight, speculative grade corporate bonds in the U.S. finally saw a month of losses in July. Large daily declines were seen on the 18th, a day after headlines of turmoil in the Middle East and Ukraine, but even larger losses came in on the last day of the month following the FOMC's July meeting. For the month of July, speculative grade bonds lost 0.89%. Investment grade bonds also saw their first losses in seven months, coming in at 0.14%. Among equities, losses were even greater, as the S&P 500 index dropped 1.5% from the start of the month. Over the course of July, investment grade bonds saw losses in the first few days of the month, with even larger daily losses following the FOMC meeting that ended on the 30th. For speculative grade bonds, the path of daily returns was generally that of declines throughout the month, with a marked sell-off following the FOMC meeting. This near-constant decline in returns has served to expand the gap between higher and lower grade bonds in the year to date. Through July 31st, investment grade bonds have returned 6.53%, only slightly lower than the 6.68% year-to-date return through June, while speculative grade bonds have now returned 4.6% through July compared to a much higher 5.5% through the prior month. While all rating categories saw declines in July, investment grade bonds clearly fared better. The overall investment grade segment saw losses of 0.14%, with the higher rated categories seeing the lowest level of losses. In fact, among AAA to AA bonds, losses were limited to just 0.07%. Among speculative grade categories, however, the declines were much greater, with the double B and triple C to single C categories losing 1% and 0.94% respectively. Bond yields on investment-grade industrials and 10-year treasuries saw a good deal of fluctuation over the course of the month. After seeing sharp increases in the first few days of the month, yields generally fell steadily since, only to rise again at the end of July. Ultimately, over the course of the month, the increases would be only five or six basis points across all investment grade categories and 10-year treasuries. Speculative grade industrials and five-year treasuries, on the other hand, saw a mostly steady stream of increases in their yields. Their relative increases in yield were much higher, with the double B to double B minus category seeing the highest relative increase of 18.1% to yield 4.9% at the end of July. As has been the case in recent years, Federal Reserve announcements can coincide with marked movements on daily bond market returns, and July's performance seems to reinforce this point. And the heightened tensions in the Middle East and Ukraine have only added to the market's woes. Among speculative grade bonds, a sell-off has been in the making for some time, though hints at interest rate increases may have also started to make more secure debt less attractive as well. There is, of course, much that could happen to change the future course of Federal Reserve policy, Though with the economy showing signs of life, it is unlikely to change, making this more likely to be the end of U.S. corporate bonds winning streak and not just a monthly blip.